boards and had 16 offensive rebounds. And it was Langford and Ortiz who got it done. They need to be big again tonight if they're going to win this one. The post players to keep an eye on for the Wyoming Cowboys are from two different worlds, but they're playing the same game from Belgium. Mikhail Linskins and from Los Angeles, Joseph Taylor. Uh, Linskins has really come on as of late. Just kind of getting his feel, and he's exploded in the last two games. 23 points two games ago. Uh, and then in the last game against New Mexico, nine points and eight rebounds. And then Joseph Taylor is a voracious rebounder. He just eats the ball up, especially on the offensive end. A very physical player, great leaping ability. He finishes well at the rim. You see him here on an alley, you throw it down. He will have to play well, and those guys will have to play position defense, make sure they box out and keep TCU off of those offensive boards. Well, these two teams ready to go. One of them trying to climb up the Mountain West Conference standings. Pistol Pete has them fired up here at the Arena Auditorium. The Pokes are ready. They'll meet the Horn Frogs. It's Wyoming and TCU coming up on the mountain. And have the basketball. Jason Eby, going from Houston, Texas. Just a sophomore working on Brandon Ewing. I had a couple of things to watch for early in the first meeting between these two teams. TCU really pressured Wyoming and caused pressure up and down the floor. That might not be so easy at 7,200 feet. And uh, TCU also was tremendous on the offensive glass. So as TCU's on offense, if they miss, Wyoming's got to box out and limit them to one shot. Lankford starts by hitting a three. Lankford will hit a few out there every now and again. And he's coming off a big game and an upset win over San Diego State down at Fort Worth last Saturday. He hit a lot of big shots in that one. Ended up with 16 points, and it seemed like every time San Diego State made a run, it was Kevin Langford who had an answer. Good start for TCU. Now Ewing coming off a five-point performance against New Mexico in which they lost 100-55. to An embarrassing loss for Wyoming. I asked Brandon Ewing prior to the game, how many points you have in you tonight? He made a guarantee, Blaine. Uh -oh. He said, I guarantee at least two points. Ah. So you're really going out on a limb there. You're averaging 17 a game. I'll tell you what, Brandon Ewing is great to visit with. He's got a great personality. He's a leader on this team. A very articulate, very humble young man. Back in. Linskins on the rebound. Ahead to Jones. Jones trying to get around Salter. The jump stop good for two. And that's where Brad Jones is at his best. When he's in the open court, you cannot get in front of him. He's too quick. He's got tremendous lateral quickness. Maybe the best in the Mountain West Conference. Eby will split time at the point with Mike Scott. Scott has yet to check in. Hackett tried the wraparound pass. And our first whistle of the game. Keys to the game brought to you by Dodge first for TCU. Well, they've got to go to the offensive glass. They had 16 offensive boards in the first meeting, and that was the difference. And then finish with poise. It seems on the road, TCU's been able to get out and get a lead in games, and they faded down the stretch. They've got to play with poise and sustain the effort in the second half. Lenskins' second rebound. The foul was on him, too. So Wyoming a chance to gain the lead early with this possession. Jones with Hackett on him, out to Dermody. Henry Salter back in the lineup, seems to be playing at about 100%. And a foul is called on Brad Jones, an offensive foul, so the ball is turned over to TCU. Got to say about Salter, injured his ankle a couple of weeks ago against UNLV. Wyoming keys to the game brought to you by Don. Well, they've got to box out. They cannot allow TCU to get easy second chance points and win the turnover battle. As we mentioned, down in Fort Worth, the pressure got to them. They need to handle the ball. That's on Brandon Ewing and Brad Jones to take care of it on the perimeter as they push the ball. Wyoming's a team that runs the ball so much better here at home. Now, I don't know if it's just a, in, in their mind that they figure they're at 7,200 feet and they've got to push it, but they take care of the basketball and they push it better here in the Arena Auditorium. Ortiz spots up. Linskins, his third rebound. Now, you don't want him dribbling. That's the reason why. Ryan Wall on the steal. Gives it off to Langford. Langford steps into the lane off the glass and good for two. So the turnover results in two points and a three-point TCU lead. And Ryan Wall has been so good off the bench for TCU. Ewing, 15-footer rolls out. It comes Eby the other way. Now, TCU's got to be careful not to get into a running kind of game up here. They're not used to this. There's a good block by Linskins. This Wyoming team's a team that goes after the basketball. They are uh, 
A team with a number of guys with good timing. Linskin block shots, Taylor block shots, Dermody block shots. And here's Linskin. Just a little bit lazy with it. And if you're Brandon Ewing and you know that your seven footer has the ball in the backcourt, you've got to go get the ball from him. If you've got a defender there, you go get it, and, and you've got to come to the basketball. Linskin's coming off a 23 point performance over Cal State Bakersfield. Seems to be getting better and better and better. We're going to visit with his coach from Belgium coming up this half. Luke Van Der Waal, who is the head coach of the Belgian national under 20 team, who recommended Linskins to Heath Schroyer here. He is in attendance, traveling from Belgium here. And we'll talk to him about his protege. And Brandon Ewing with a nice floater in the middle of the key. And, and Ewing, I, I don't know if you would call him a great shooter, but he is a great scorer. He just understands how to get the ball in the basket. He's got a variety of shots in his repertoire. Tyson Johnson with a basketball to Ryan Dermody. Lob inside, Linskins, and there's a weapon. If they can get that high low to go, Blaine, that's going to be trouble for TCU. Oh, and Linskins has demonstrated the last couple games he has soft hands, and he can finish if you get him the ball in a good spot. Rebound, Dermody off the Parker miss. Well, Linskins was adjusting, you'd say, in his first 10 to 15 games to the American college style of basketball. And he seems to have adjusted pretty well. Ryan Wall commits the foul. Mikhail Linskins getting into the offense in a big way for the Cowboys. Take a timeout, 6-5, Wyoming. Langford and Eby, starting five. Or the first line back in the game. <laughs> Ortiz trying to get Linskins to come out and play him. Knocked around by Tyson Johnson. Inside Ortiz has it stripped by Jones. Boy, that was a good hustle play by Jones. He, he realized he was late at getting his rotation and getting back in the paint. The double team goes over on Langford, and, and Jones was just a hair late but he had the quick hands to knock the ball away from Ortiz. Beautiful pass by Langford and a great recovery by Brad Jones. Eric Platt is into the game, the sophomore from Casper, Wyoming. He's out there to guard Hackett. Haskins comes out to help out on Langford. E.B. stutters, gives it off to Hackett, fires from long range, and he hits. Ren Hackett not afraid to shoot from anywhere on the court. He's got three, and it's a one-point TCU lead. Hackett is a guy that in high school was an unbelievable scorer. Had, had a couple of games where he scored over 50 points in a high school game. And he, he's in college has been a little bit streaky, but when he is on, well, he can he can be scary from deep. Johnson knocked out of bounds by Ortiz and one. 11.51 remaining in the first half, 13-12. TCU leading the Wyoming Cowboys with Blaine Fowler, Tim Neverett, special guest joining us courtside right now. Luke Vanderwally is with us from Belgium. You've come a long way. I mean, we think we come a long way to come to Laramie for a game, but you've come all the way from Belgium to see Mikhail Linskins, your former player. That's, that's uh, correct, yeah. It's uh, been a long uh, trip, and nine hours to, into Washington and four more into Denver last night, but it's okay. How about the start Mikhail has had in this game? But he, he surprised me already this morning on practice. He lost a lot of uh, weight. He became much faster, and I think it's not easy to play a 6'8 guy because he's a 7-footer, but he started well at three runs and a block shot and a nice dunk. Now you coached him with the Belgian national under-20 team. That's correct. What's his future? Do you think as far as uh, professional basketball and perhaps even playing for the senior national team? But he, he got already a few offers to play professional basketball this year, but we convinced Mikhail and especially his parents not to take the, the early money and, and to develop himself coming into NCAA basketball. Because I feel if he goes now to the professional game, he'll be a bench player and get maybe two, three minutes. But he gets quite a lot of playing time, much more than we thought as a freshman. So if he stays four years here, I think he's going to earn in one year what he will get now in two or three. What, what do you think um, are the key areas that he needs to improve upon? I think, first of all, his athletic ability. Uh, you have to consider the Belgian program. We practice once a day with the youngsters. And so we develop first fundamentals. And you think you can see that Mikhail has real good hands, real good skills for a big guy shooting a three-point shot. You don't find a lot of seven-footers doing that. That, but he needs athletic development and we cannot go that much to the weight room uh, at the young age so we only do that from 18 old so that's I think the big, biggest 
uh, working point from, from Mikhail. His athletic, athletic ability. Get a little more physical as well, and we just saw him make, make a nice uh, play. You talk about his athletic skills and his soft hands, a real nice soft touch on a fadeaway in the key on that last offensive set. So 17-13 Wyoming lead, and a foul is called underneath. Again, Luke Van Der Waal is with us from Belgium, the coach of the under-20 Belgian national team. And you can see where Mikhail Lipskin's in the middle uh, creates something because he forced Brent Hackett to redirect his shot. They come back the other end, pick up the foul. I think you, you can see Mikhail has really good hands. He has a left hook shot, a right hook shot. He can shoot the, the easy jumper, but he can also shoot the three if he gets a bit of time. So if they develop his legs and his body, especially getting tougher because we always told him like a very friendly teddy bear he's, he's too soft in, in the game so if he gets a little tougher i think he'll be hell of a player well there's there's his numbers tonight four points he's two for two from the field and and, uh, and has a good start you knew heath schroyer before he came to wyoming there's the connection right? yeah that's a connection yeah i thought we could we, we thought coach Schreier would be the right man in the right place because uh, he's a tough man i think he Works extremely hard with the kids, and that's exactly what Mikael needed somebody to toughen them up with. Tyson Johnson on the rebound, and here is Brandon Ewan. Five point lead for Wyoming. Heath, of course, uh, you know, trying to build a new mentality here. Heath always uh, had a reputation as being a tremendous defensive coach, very dem uh, demanding defensively, and, and we see flashes of that with this Wyoming team. But it, it's tough to come in, you know, as a coach, with, with a team that's had a different mentality than that and try to turn that around quickly. Of course, but I think uh, the sign of Coach Troy, if I'm not uh, mistaken, for five years, so that's his first year, I think uh, he definitely has the eager and the desire to turn this into a winning program, and I think he'll do. You know him from the Fresno State period, where he, they played a hard-nosed, uh, tough in defense, and I think they'll do up here within the next season also. Langford is fouled as he goes to the basket. And Heath Troyer wanting a traveling call before the, fo the foul on Langford. Boy, Langford has uh, got a beautiful skill set. He's he's a very versatile player. He's got nice range and, and he, not quite out to three point. He can shoot threes. He's not real comfortable out there shooting 23 percent this year. But from 15 feet in, he is deadly. He's got great touch. He's got good low post moves. He's a good rebounder. Plays solid defense. He has really been a solid player for them after transferring from Cal a couple of years ago. Well, look, I think people are going to be uh, trying to grab you here before you leave the States, asking if you've got any more players hanging around here. Well, we have two more Belgians in the NCAA, and we have a kid by the name of Christoph Ungern at Syracuse, who's doing extremely well, comes from junior college cluster, the first year at Syracuse as junior, gets a lot of playing time, to play 37 minutes the other night, so, and we have a sophomore kid at Eastern Kentucky. It's a bit lower level, but still a good uh, basketball player, so three Belgian kids for the moment in the state. Now, are they all big guys? What positions are they playing? Uh, Robin at Eastern Kentucky plays like a combo guard. He's a 1-2, and Christoph is a 3-4 at Syracuse. Evie with a steal, one of the nation's top steal guys. And they've got to stop the game because the game clock had not run. They're going to run it down a little bit now. They're going to have to try to determine how much time to take off the clock before they put the ball back in play. Well, look, it was a pleasure visiting with you. Uh, enjoy your travels here. I know Belgium's not exactly next door. It's not as close no. as Colorado. It's nice to be here, and we can follow you guys on the computer the Mountain West, so we do that. Uh, it's a bit different with the time delay. It's eight hours different, so Belgium now it's in the middle of the night, so if you want to watch it, I have to get up every time, three, four o'clock in the morning, but we do have a pleasure. You're a coach. You'd be watching film in the middle of the night anyway. That's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thank Luke. you for having me. Appreciate it's it very a much. pleasure. Luke Vandeveld, Vandewally, the head coach of the under-20 national team, also one of the coaches of uh, one of the pro clubs in Belgium as well. And again, talking to him before the game and, and what he relayed to us, too, that Mikhail Lipskins had an opportunity to turn pro before coming to Wyoming, but the money just wasn't going to be good enough. Well, and he, he mentioned that he feels like if he develops over four years and can get more physical, build his lower body, that uh, he'll make more money in his first year in the pros than he would have in the four years of playing two or three minutes a game. So a good move. And it's interesting, the relationship that uh, many of these countries in Europe have uh, with their players, where they actually try to place them and get them experience, and then they come back and they can represent their country. So right now, the officials are looking 